Hey friends, we appreciate you, the listener, and I hope you appreciate our sponsors because they make Hansel Minutes possible. Today's first sponsor is Melissa. Are you looking to build real-time contact data validation and enrichment into your applications? Try Melissa's developer portal. You'll gain easy access to flexible APIs for global address verification, phone, IP address, email, and property and business data. Sample code and get post methods plus technical documentation are all included. Quick online payment makes rapid application development easy. Please visit melissa.com slash developer or call 1-800-MELISSA. Hi, this is Scott Hansman. This is another episode of Hansel Minutes. And I've got Arlen Hamilton, founder of Backstage Capital. You were on the show two years ago, and I think I was less than professional. You were so professional, but I was going to I was gonna say, well, we should say that Christy's here. Christy Pitts. Hello. Hi. Woo. Um, Christy Pitts is my investment partner at Backstage Capital, and she's with us today in Portland. I should say that I wasn't talking smack. I was going to say to Christy, so we recorded like two years ago. I had just met Scott just probably a couple of days prior to that at, at an event, right? And um, he came and he recorded in, uh, at the hotel. And he came in. He didn't have a couple of pieces of equipment that he needed. <laughs> but it was fine, you know. But it was I was just like, huh, I wonder, you know, because I hadn't done many podcasts at that point And, you know, I hadn't met a lot of people in tech. So I was just like, what's going on here? And I, it was fine. It was fine. And I was in a rush. I'll, whatever. As soon as he pushes record, though, it's like you're transported into another world. <laughs> you're so professional. Like, you're so good. It's almost like it's um, the second skin that you put on or something. It's really good. It reminds me a lot of musicians who just go on stage and they're on or are actors who are just like – shooting the breeze and then they're like action and then boom they're there you know so yeah i thought it was really interesting well that's that's very kind i appreciate the compliment and if if, if i may then thinking about how you were at the time you were uh if i may say somewhat shy you were a little nervous and you said that you didn't do a lot of public speaking true all of that but you now have a podcast of your own, uh-huh. and you are the subject of another podcast. That's right. So do you consciously take things that you are either uncomfortable with or you're not like not your specialty and then just keep doing them until you become an expert at them? It depends on my interest level. So I don't necessarily do that for everything, but if I am really interested and, and really got have it in my head that I, I need to do something to be better mm-hmm. or... Sorry. It's okay. Hang on. There might be an edit point there. Did you check it off airplane mode? Yeah. Is it still there? Yeah. It might be me because I'm on an airport. No. Airport. We have to be on air. I think. I okay. Think I can do you, it. When you yeah. took it off I can do about it. 30 seconds ago, it started again. I apologize. Okay. okay. No worries. I'll do it too. I, I realize that that's <clears throat> we'll all get asking, in the plane. asking you for you to be disconnected for. Yeah. There's a lot. Of, there's Just there's a lot me. that goes on. In our in our phones, Scott. I don't know why. You're Actually, you know what I thought would be an edit point. I think we'll just keep it in there because we're yeah. in this case. Uh, sometimes when, you're, when your phone and you're doing a podcast, you can hear the email. Yeah, whoosh in, whoosh in. and I can hear it like a ghost anyway. Even when I'm not really hearing it, I hear I hear emails going ding or like buzzing <laughs> in my pocket. Even when there's no, nothing there. So. What has changed in the last two years? Is this just – is it an order of magnitude more happening? When it with- comes to me not being shy no. not, and, and being able to speak, <laughs> I, you're right. I'm, I'm flashing back to it, and it was a very different situation. Yeah. Um, uh, a little, a, about a year ago exactly, I spoke – did like my first public speaking thing in tech. Mm. And it was because two months prior, I made a promise to myself that I would no longer miss out on, on opportunities because of a, of my, my issue with stage fright. Mm. And so I had really bad stage fright, like, like half the population does. Right. And um, it was just, to me, it was like, no, I'm just not going to do it. I don't, I don't do anything I don't want to do. I can do stuff online. I, can, I don't have to go in front of people. And then I had two things happen where I missed out. I, uh, one was I missed getting in an award that my mom was attending. And I couldn't take the award because I couldn't do the <laughs> – it's oh, so wow. silly to hear it now. But I couldn't do the acceptance speech, and they needed you to be able to, to do that in order to be honored at this thing. And oh, I wow. – just told them, like, I just said no. And that, and I realized as I was watching someone else get the award how 
not cool that was of me. And then the second thing was I missed out on an opportunity to possibly speak with one of my uh, heroes, Richard Branson, because he was speaking at Forbes 30 Under 30 the same year that I was asked to speak and at the same stage right after me. So I had said no to that because I just couldn't. It was at Faneuil Hall, which was at the time like saying, go to the White House and speak, you know, yeah. on the lawn, basically. And um, so I said no. And I watched from the seats and watched him speak and watched him go back to the green room where I would have been sitting and possibly meeting him. So in January 2017, I said, I'm going to say yes to three different um, speaking engagements this, this year, that mm-hmm. year. And even if it sucks, even if it's horrible, I would have tried. So then Ania Williams, who you know from, mm-hmm. um, from Black and Brown Founders and from ZebraCon, uh-huh. and she's also a founder in our portfolio, she asked me to do something uh, in March of 2017. I reluctantly said yes because I had already made that promise to myself. Mm-hmm. Um, she made it very comfortable. I was terrified. There were probably 60 people in the room tops, Mm -hmm. still terrified. And then something happened when she asked me the first question. Like I was terrified. I was off on the side, just like shaking. And Christy knows she was there. Like I was like, it was. Can confirm. (laughs) It was like really, uh, it was, my heart was uh, pounding and I was like, why, how did I get here? And actually someone offered to like go get me alcohol because at the time, yeah, I used to drink and, and, and quite a bit. And they were like, can I get you something? They went and got me something to drink, but I didn't drink it. And so I got there, got on to, you know, got in the seat with the microphone. It was being live streamed as well. And um, something about when that first question, she asked me that first question and I looked out at the audience and I was just like, there's people just like smiling at me and like mm. I felt like it was so much more important that I said I and mean, I shared than me being about myself and how scared I was. Yeah. It felt like someone was going to get something from it. And then that started being proven over and over again when people would come up to me and say, hey, mm-hmm. I saw you speak at this thing and like that inspired me to do this other thing or yeah. something like that. And and when I realized that it wasn't important that I sounded super smart or if I knew everything, it, didn't, it wasn't important that I didn't know everything. Right. It was more important that I showed up and that I shared and then I gave of myself. And then when it became about other people, that's really easy to convince me to get over something. Mm-hmm. When I, when I, sometimes I'll come into um, contact with young people that are on stage or I'm coming off stage and they're about to come on after me or whatever. And I was talking with a young woman who was an intern uh, at Microsoft and, and I didn't realize that after me, she was going to be giving her first talk ever. And I could tell wow. she, was, she was vibrating with that. Like, what have I done? Yes. <laughs> right. What, <laughs> what have, have I, I signed up for? <laughs> and I was trying to figure out like, what am I supposed, I was expected to like, kind of like say something inspirational or like just, and I just said, Everybody here wants you to succeed. This audience yeah. is not against you. They want you to kick butt, and they're going to cheer when you do. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if that helped or not, but she did kick butt. Yeah. yeah. So that's my now my go-to thing yes. to like remind them that the audience loves you. That sure. they came to see you. So yeah, and I and I think that's definitely helpful. And I know for me at that point, I everything that people said to me just sounded scary. <laughs> <laughs> so what I try to say to people is like. Yeah, you could suck, it, you know. What's but what will happen if you do? You know, what's the worst that could happen if you do? It's what's the worst that could happen is a big statement that can get people twisted off into their own minds. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. really bad stuff could potentially happen. Yeah, I think it comes down to, um, it. Ha- you know, it's a lot like a lot of things, like stopping a vice or something. Mm-hmm. It's like it has to come from within. It has to be your time. It has to come from you. You can get advice from everybody. You can hear things, and maybe those things will echo in your mind. Mm. But when it comes down to it, overcoming a fear like this and like so many other types of fears, it really just comes down to you have that moment, I think, right? I mean, I've, I've had that a few times. I read, I read an article that, that was talking about why people have their vices and why they fail to stop smoking or why they right. fall off their, their diet. Like I'm on like another diet right now. And my wife is like, you know, you always do this for a couple of months. I log every calorie yes. and then I stop. Right. And I read this article that said we have wells of willpower mm-hmm. and that well, that well of willpower can be depleted. Um, I don't remember figuring out how to fill it up though. <laughs> 
Uh, and I'm hearing Diet but, Coke is I hear it's, it's I'm really. like yeah I could mainline Diet yeah. Coke. <laughs> wow, oh, we yeah. get along. Yes, with lime. Um, <laughs> what I want to understand though is that in all the things you're describing, whether it be starting, you know, bootstrapping your 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 capital fund, whether it be getting over uh, public speaking concerns, you must have this infinite well of willpower. And how do you? Where does this will? Where does this well come from? Because you're describing all these things that require. Reserves of willpower. <laughs> you know, this image I just got was that it's not a. If it's a well, then you know some of it has to go somewhere, and it's almost like it's just. I mean, <laughs> you want my honest answer? I, I've, I've asked all. I weigh two hundred forty pounds, mm. so yes, I have willpower about a lot of things, <laughs> but it's transferred. So ah. I used to have a. You know, I used to drink really heavily mm-hmm. and w- was not able to stop until mm. uh, uh, about ten months ago, mm-hmm. and that was nothing I could control mm. until I could. And I would say definitely I have willpower because I don't think I could have gotten here mm. at this point in my career and what we were doing at Backstage without willpower and a lot of other things. But I think everybody has – there's something. There's some vice. And I, you know, my vice is chocolate, yeah. Diet Coke, breads, and cheeses. See, we can, we can very much vibe <laughs> over the cheese and Diet Coke crowd because yes. there's people that work – that I will see put down two, three pots of coffee before lunch. Yeah. Nobody says boo. Right. But I drink two Diet Cokes. Man, you need to take a break. You yeah. Have a problem. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think we do. I but, think we do have a problem. Of all the problems I could have, like Thank aspartame you. is low on the list. Yeah. Like yeah. I'm diabetic. Yeah. What else can I yeah, drink? Yeah, exactly. All right. The air in my mouth tastes better than water. <laughs> So if I can't have Diet Coke, like cut me some slack. Let me drink a Diet Coke. Can I live? Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> She's oh. like, this podcast has taken a turn. Yeah. It, it's taken several turns. Um, <laughs> yes. Don't even get me started on cheese. I well, See, I'm a string cheese. Like, I... Oh, oh. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I need to stop this podcast. Yes. Do you bite the string cheese or do you pull on the sides? Okay. I'm a, I'm a lady. Okay, Scott. good. You're not a so, savage. So, of course, I peel it. It's, okay. That's what it's there for. I was going to make sure. Yeah. That's why it's created this, in this in, Amongst the cheese community of which you and I are members, yes. this is the pineapple on pizza question. You know, mm. Do you just bite the string cheese like savage or do you like, peel who, it off? Who are these people that do that? Do you the, do that, Christy? It's the people who bite into the I Kit have, Kat. I must confess, I have you bit oh, the okay. string cheese. But I prefer to peel... However, I will bite for efficiency. And Not just, enough diligence, I have apparently. Oh on this one. To How do you do that? Bit. How do you bite into a string cheese? I know we have so little time. Do you but completely I'm disrespect so... the Kit Kat? You just go sideways. Oh, or? the Kit Kat! Oh, I have methodology on the Kit okay. Kat. Okay, so the Kit Kat, I like. I like to. You know how it's like. Give me a break. I'm going to take a break of the Kit Kat bar. What's the give phrase? Me a break? <laughs> yes, yeah, that. Yeah. Okay, like, I really do need a break to eat a Kit Kat because it takes me about 45 minutes. Wow. Because I want to eat all the chocolate off. Oh. And then the the wafers one by one. I don't think that's how the Kit Kat wants to be eaten. You see how we're judging her. We don't want to be judged, but we're judging her. There is implicit judgment there. Meanwhile, the string cheese down the hatch. (laughs) I think next time you go to buy string cheese, you leave it there for people who will respect it. Yes. You don't (laughs) Okay, you get the other cheese cheese that you can chew on. Fair enough. Fair enough. Right. You can have the little ones, the little baby bell weirdo, like the cow cheese. You can have those. And you can eat the outside, too, if you want to. (laughs) <laughs> just eat the wax it's fine the judgment in this room <laughs> over what we eat sorry okay so this Palpable. is so, so you there are vices and the, the well of willpower is is not limitless but you focus on the things that matter to you and you drink yeah, a diet I'm, coke without guilt i think it's the same thing that makes you know it, it's kind of cliche but i am sort of i'm full on whether that's good or bad so if I'm yeah. interested in something, right. I can become full on, and that gets me starting a venture capital fund from nothing. And it also gets me like I'm going to eat that pizza, mm-hmm. that whole one, and own it. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's it's good and it's bad. Mm-hmm. It's it's a it's that double sided sword, as it were. But that skill though has made this fund even more successful. So the years, two years later, since I last talked to you, how many investments have you all made? We're officially at eighty. Seriously, of a hundred, and that, what does that of a hundred mean? Well, so I set when I first set out, um, I set this goal for myself of getting to a hundred companies by twenty twenty, for not as a race or anything, but sort of like I felt like that is what was needed to make the most impact and the most mm-hmm. noise. 
I thought that if I invested in five or six companies, that would be really cool because I didn't have any money. So that would be something. Right. But I thought, you know, I want to do something that people think is impossible because they're saying that there are not enough companies even started by women or people of color or LGBT founders. So. Mm-hmm. I had have very high standards for what we invest in, and I was seeing so many companies. And since then, you know, I see we see like thousand, we see like twelve hundred this year, probably. Really, and it's gonna. It was like a thousand the last couple of years. Hey, folks! Intel is a sponsor this week, and I welcome them because they're bringing some high performance developer tools for all of us. Check out Intel's Parallel Studio XE. I've talked about parallelism before on the show and the importance of using the complete instruction set unlocking the power of the processor that your code is running on. Now, you all might be writing C or C++, Python, or even Fortran, but is your code building in such a way and written in such a way that it uses the latest techniques for vectorization, multi-threading, multi-node parallelization, or memory optimization? Intel Parallel Studio XE has a lot of new stuff for 2018 across all these languages. Get a free download at bit.ly.com slash Parallel Studio XE, or certainly go and Google or Google with Bing for Intel Parallel Studio XE, and get started boosting your app's performance with smart, parallel code with a lot less effort. Check them out, bit.ly.com slash Parallel Studio XE. Comparing now to when we spoke in 2016, did you feel that like kind of you were you were niche before and now everyone knows you? Because like while we were walking from the first floor to the second floor of this building, you got pitched like twice. Yeah, and that's low. Yeah, I, you know what I, I mean. And like, and I was part of it because I wanted someone to meet you. But it was just yeah. like everyone is the, giving you the equivalent of like my mixtape is fire, all the way up. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> God, you tripping me out. <laughs> But it's true, though, isn't it? Right? Isn't that happening? That like what happens all day long. I mean, you get um, pitched on the bus at the airport. I get right? pitched mm-hmm. all the time, and and it's only going to get mm, well when you have a hundred. When you have a hundred. Yeah, and uh, you know, um, so yeah, I get pitched a lot. I, I, the thing that I set out to do that I didn't know if I would be able to, but I knew that I wanted to try. That thing is happening, mm. which is I said, what if there was someone that every black founder in the country. If they were starting a company, they would want to have on their cap table. What mm-hmm. if there was there was someone? And I can't say that 100 percent do. I'm not going to go that far. But mm-hmm. they at least, you know, seven out of those ten are going to know backstage or know of us. Right. And maybe five out of ten want us on their cap table, if not more. What does that mean, cap table? Cap table is um, it's just a list of investors mm-hmm. in your company. Okay. And let let me ask you some of the questions that some of the people who will be listening to this show will be thinking. Why do black and brown founders need an advocate or a fund of their own? Why aren't they just pitching the regular, quote unquote, regular way? Mm -hmm. They are. They are pitching the the quote unquote regular way. Okay. Um, They're just – there's a lot of bias Mm -hmm. and there are a lot of roadblocks for for black and brown founders that are just – inherently there mm-hmm. and there you know i said that two years ago and i can tell you with every, you know even more now i know so been, much more you've been both on the inside and the outside yeah and the, the we talk about data collection i mean we have it we see it in droves mm-hmm. um and there's just there's so much now there's so much to that question now because it's more than it was when i started it's when i a started lot's happened in two years a lot has happened in the in the world, and I, the things that I couldn't have imagined with backstage have happened. Where, in some cases, it's just about like I recently had someone contact me who who was in a very comp- competitive round. Okay, oversubscribed. You couldn't get into the round, but they wanted backstage just because they didn't have any women of color on their cap table. On their list of investors. So, over, so translate some of that into layman's language. Oh, for okay, me. that's so right. So, oversubscribed meaning that everyone wanted to invest in them. Yeah. So that's another thing that you do very well, Scott. You're, 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 you're your own person. Okay, I know. Um, <laughs> I just want to advocate for the listener. You are. You're. You're so good at that. I see. I'm learning because I have my own podcast. So I'm learning more and more from you. Okay. So this 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 people they were oversubscribed and they're so this company when mm-hmm. I, the, the the example I just gave. So this company 
had already raised the amount of money that they wanted to raise, that they okay. set out to, in a very quick amount of time, which is not normal. And then on top of that, they had a waiting list of investors saying, can we please invest because you're such a cool company and such oh a good company we want in. And they you, – so you can't walk up to them and say, hey, can we, can we talk? So I, I would have like – I would have a million dollars and I would want you to would give have it to them. They don't even want it. Zero. They have enough Zero people. chance. I've even – I like, can't give yeah. them money. Absolutely. Wow. So that same company – this is just an example. Yeah. You know, they reached out to me and said, we'd like you to – get in before we close this round officially legally interesting so they went for you and said we want your yeah. money because we want you on our list of people we can call yeah. investors we so, can say backstage appreciates us yeah and gets us and on their list of, i mean these people you know the people on the waiting list and the people that had invested are top tier funds mm-hmm. who were just they're getting no it's it's almost like think about if you go if you walk up to a club and you, they say, "Are you on the list?" And yep. If you're not on the list, you kind of you can wait in line. There's a chance you might be able to get in. But what they said to to backstage was, "Hey, VIP, you're already in. Come on back." So you cut the line, open the velvet rope, and then you're in the club. Yeah, okay. I got a little bit. I felt privilege. It was it was a little taste of privilege that I hadn't had. So existed. let's let's talk about that a little bit. We've talked before about how I do like what my friend Anwan Simmons uh, invented this idea of lending privilege. Yeah, I try, to, I try to lift people up, give them a little bump, the Hanselman bump, right, ah. on the way on mm. the way up. <laughs> I, I I talk to people. <laughs> I try to talk to people. That, don't tease me now. I try to talk to people on the. I try to talk to people on the come up and give them some visibility, right? Yeah. yeah. So very, very much so. So originally, you know, some number of years ago, and you can tell me how many years ago, you were lacking in a number of privileges, not the least of which being a roof over your head. Yeah. And now you're finding yourself both in some ways underprivileged, but in some ways extremely privileged. Yeah. You could call venture people on the phone. You probably can text people at Google Ventures right now. Yes. That is a privilege I do not have. Yes. How does that feel when you have one foot in a place of privilege and one foot in not a place of privilege? It's funny. It's a humorous ride because within moments I can experience both. So I can well, feel – maybe boarding a plane. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I board planes – I probably fly four or five times a week now. Mm-hmm. So I board planes a lot. I'm in first class a lot. So I have that experience of – do you? Can I see your ticket? Are you supposed to be here? A lot. And I'm like, you know, uh, you know. I while don't... you're on the way to close a round. Yeah, exactly. Like the irony of that. Exactly. Like I would have just said – or I would have just, you know, spent a day just – working my ass off and and working with hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, back and forth in mm-hmm. some way or another. And then I get on the plane to go to the next place to maybe do a, a, a speaking engagement or meet with the founder. And I'll have that moment of, you know, you're the help, mm. you know, and that happens every day. It happened uh, within 24 hours. I mean, like of now, like it happens every yeah. single day, those microaggressions. But on the other side of it, I... Well, the way that I describe it is that I've been siphoning privilege for the past three years. And what what I do is I see – like I watch men and I watch white people and I see what they do with their privilege mm-hmm. and I siphon it like a – I don't know. There's probably some sort of uh, character. This is interesting. That's juxtaposing lending privilege and siphoning privilege. Oh, I siphon it because sometimes people don't – there's not a lot of people like you who want to lend it. So I appreciate the lend, but with the ones who are not lending – Boom, while they're looking over, I'm, I have the little, <laughs> what do you call it, when you're taking people's gas yeah, out yeah. their car? Do you know what I'm talking about, Christy, not, Christy not, Pitts? Not, not that I've done that once or twice as a young person. Yes. Christy Pitts, have you ever siphoned gas? I have not siphoned it tastes gas, really but it is bad. like uh, you use a big straw-like thing. Oh, my, mm. oh my goodness. You take, a, <laughs> you take a bucket, and when they're not looking, you get up behind their car. Christy, Christy say, something about, say something about blockchain so we know something. <laughs> <laughs> just gonna say blockchain. Blonde and nerdy all the time, oh, same time. Yes. When you when you siphon though, you, you have to suck in on the big on the right, on the tube, the and the you tube. have to the tube the tube. The tube. Yes. That's what I meant. But you have it's to also a series make sure of tubes. if they're in the car at the time though, you have to be aware of their line of sight so that they don't look out the rearview mirror and see you siphon. You have gas. siphoned gas from a car that had a driver in it. <laughs> <laughs> But the trick is, though, if you get that, that was a yes, that was it's an affirmative. A, it's I neither confirm nor, nor deny. But if you can get some of the older cars, <laughs> then the gas tank is on the back in the old yeah. cars, and you unscrew it on the back of the trunk, right? And you don't have to come up on the side because the driver's side is dangerous. You can't siphon gas out the driver's side. You see, if one were to theoretically siphon gas, 
<laughs> I don't. Oh my God. I'm not. So. Um, so you siphon privilege. I do. I siphon it. I, I mean, I observe looking. it. I do a lot with privilege. I, I I play with privilege. I observe it. I I don't necessarily respect it. I don't have any sort of. I don't look at it in awe mm-hmm. in any way, including my own. So I don't have much um, reverence for privilege, which means that it's really easy for me to also share mine. That was the next thing I was yeah. going to ask. I, I I tweeted something a couple of weeks ago that got like a thousand tweets or whatever he yeah. tweets, and it was the most important thing that you should do once you've made it up over the ledge is to send a ladder back down. Yeah. And a lot of people really appreciated that tweet. And then a bunch of other people were like, well, is it a rope ladder? What kind of a ladder is it? <laughs> I don't think you, you just kick the ladder down and then they, they, why can't they Twitter, <laughs> Twitter, the only place where this you can give away money. Free. Yes. Give away money and someone still has a problem and tells you how you're doing it wrong, which yeah. I experienced this year. Do you really? I've experienced that this year when I started a nonprofit and I got and, and Alyssa Milano retweeted Talk about, about it. that nonprofit because that was a genius idea. That was micro oh, loans, right? Micro grants. Well, it's not loans. Yeah, grants. Micro it's grants. a total nonprofit. So I, you know, Backstage Capital is for profit, sharky. Uh, I get to play in that world um, every day. Mm-hmm. But um, it, it kind of just started. I my my dad passed away a couple of years ago, and. Um, he had this little house. It was it was not much to speak of in Jackson, Mississippi. But then I became the owner of it, mm-hmm. and a couple of years later, I sold it mm-hmm. and um, got a little bit of money from it. And I gave my mom some money. I gave my brother some money. And then I said, "Hey, I want to um, give ten five hundred dollar grants to people who are working on something cool, mm-hmm. and it can be for profit or non profit that they're working on, but just something cool." So I just put a tweet up, got a lot of response. And but the question was, what would five hundred dollars do yeah. for you? And it's not expecting anything; just to create, to make goodness. Exactly. Yeah, I'm not. I didn't want to dictate what they were doing or give too much of a parameter around it. It was more like because um, I had done something a little bit similar on a smaller scale for Christmas. Mm-hmm. Just kind of went online and like gave away a few things, and mm-hmm. I saw the results of that. Like a couple of months later, and I was like, "This is too cool! Like you can do something for fifty dollars that just has some impact." And I remembered being—you you alluded to this before—but I remember being so broke just recently, just in the last three years, being so broke where fifty dollars would have just made my week mm-hmm. to get that out of nowhere. So that's what I did the Christmas thing about. And then the five hundred, I said, "Well, fifty will do something. Five hundred will really do something and <clears throat> really affect." change and move things and i'm i'm about um i I like to see things happen pretty quickly i don't like to sit around there was there's an instantaneous aspect to this it wasn't just like pay down someone's debt you wanted to take that and do something yeah that's what i was looking for i mean but people could kind of just pitch whatever Mm -hmm. and they just told me and so people just started sending things and and then um Alyssa milano retweeted it and then because of that um, Deborah Messing, who plays Grace on Will and Grace, who what I, I've been watching for nearly twenty years, she retweeted it and liked it, and so we got I got like fifteen hundred responses for ten for ten oh, no. yeah. So when I when that happened, Pressure. I did choose ten, okay. which were awesome. But then I said, hey, th- there's this is something, and it's not so big that it's un- it's insurmountable, right? Insurmountable. So um, I decided to turn it into like an official nonprofit. Where we um, gift five hundred dollar grants just per- per- why can't I talk today periodically throughout the year mm-hmm. and there's really I mean it's it's so me it's not, it's, it's not a GoFundMe it's not a Patreon it's something different yeah it's like, yeah it's like this five hundred dollars is a barrier between me and this great Correct. thing that Correct. I want to do yeah I started with Brian Landers and and Diane Cherez mm-hmm. who are both um, friends of mine and on the backstage team and we just we we get to you know grant people money to do cool things. So it's anything from like there, there was a ahead. cosplayer who yes. wanted something like it was like so it's a black woman who like young woman who wanted to go to this convention that she's never been able to go to mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and she showed pictures of her doing cosplay. Mm-hmm. And you know that's not really my thing to be honest like it's yeah. not the world that I live in. I've had a lot of 
like friends that do that. But I, it's not something I personally would do. But I was like, that like gives her joy. There's pure joy on well, her. Well, her face. whole Twitter feed was she's just geeked about that. Yeah. And for people like you and I who are privileged to go to conferences and speak at conferences, yeah. I know people who go to a conference every three years. Or yeah, and never. I I couldn't get into a conference before three years ago. I just couldn't. Exactly. That there was no way that could happen right. unless somebody handed me a way in. And I just I thought about like I kind of sent myself into the future and said, what would that be like if she were able to go? What could that What could that mean for her? And mm-hmm. what could that create in her and stir in her and what could she then do with that and I, that was just the that's just it. one example that's trip one of, example. The trip of a lifetime for that for her, for her. yeah and, and like it's there it's attainable mm-hmm. so um yeah so now we now we do that and what is the name of that and where can we go it's and called, it's a non-profit i can donate money to that's right you can apply or you can donate money if you if you'd like and we get donations from five dollars to five thousand honestly seriously yes so anything is great you know mm-hmm. and it's it is it's called Cover and it's projectcover.org. org. Okay, and it's also Project Cover on Twitter. Projectcover.org. dot org. And then That's it's right. A nonprofit, and you might even be able to go and check with Benevi if you have a big company, and they might be able to do matching against that because yeah. it is an official nonprofit. It is officially. We have a fiscal sponsor, and it's a tax deductible donation. Now, let me ask you this: as we close the podcast, is there a, uh, can can a person invest in backstage capital, and do they have to give you a certain amount of money? Like, if there's a rich person listening to this podcast, do you? Are you, are you at the stage where I'm not even going to take your money? I cannot answer that because of SEC regulations. Oh, really? Do, 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 I did do, not know do, that. Do, well, I apologize for putting you and do, the government do, on the do, spot. Do, 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 do. <laughs> okay. So that's good to know. But people can learn more about You can backstage. learn about us all day. So where can we learn about Backstagecapital.com. Backstage. You can see everything that we do. And if you ever want to get in touch with anyone who's a, a part of our crew, which is a large crew, mm-hmm. you go to the crew page. The first name of that person at BackstageCapital.com is how you reach us. Okay. So under your team, you can go and see the list of all the different people, what they specialize in, what they focus on. That's right. First name at yes. Backstage Capital. There's also an application uh, URL, which is BackstageCapital.com backslash apply. Apply. If you are a founder or at a company and you'd like to uh, seek funding for your for-profit company that you think is going to make us a lot of money. And that we are allowed to encourage we people We encourage to. all day. So backstagecapital.com slash apply if you've got a great yeah. idea, yeah. the next killer startup, and you yeah. want Backstage Capital. And I'd involved. say, you know, if you're an investor listening, the way that we can uh, connect is talk about co-investing. We can talk about that. So get in touch. We can talk about co-investing and about what we have you know, plan for the future. Fantastic. Well, I'm so glad that things are going so well for Backstage Thank Capital. You. You've got a team of thousands now. Yes, there's thousands of us at Backstage Capital. <laughs> <laughs> how many, Christy, how do you do it? <laughs> 17,000. How many, how many people now? I think we're, yeah, are we at 17? 17. Yeah, 17. Yes. And we just started, uh, we did a joint venture with Tangelo, uh, which you can read more about mm-hmm. on our site. Um, which is a venture studio with six core members. So we're we're adding to it. And how many were you when I talked to you in that hotel? Me, low these many years ago. Me, you. Yeah, two two years ago would have been me. Um, I don't know if I'd met Brian yet. Wow. Well, that's. I don't so know fantastic. if I'd met Christy yet. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think it was me. <laughs> well, we wish you all the success in the coming two years, and hopefully, I'll check in with you again. Thank you so much. This has been another episode of Hansel Minutes, and I'll see you again next week.